Namaskaram is an offering of respect and gratitude as well as seeking the blessings of Mother Nature, our teachers and gurus, our audience, our souls and our bodies. Namaskar and welcome everybody to our online Bharatanatyam performance. Uh, we're very happy to have you here today. Um, it's definitely quite unusual for us <laughs> um, to be doing this. My name is Soha Yabro and uh, I'm, I'm a performer, a dancer and an actor. Um, and before we begin, I would like to acknowledge um, and pay respect to my teachers um, who have contributed in my Bharatanatyam journey. Um, firstly, Shima Kemani ji, who has been my first teacher, um, who really opened the world of classical arts for me. Um, and then my next two teachers, I've had um, a very brief amount of time with them, but they have had a huge impact uh, already on um, how I've understood the dance form. Uh, Vitya Arazu Akka and also uh, Sai Kripa Prasanna Akka, um, who has um, briefly taught me Natu Vangam, um, which I'm not a professional at at all, uh, but it's a great way, it has been a great way for me to understand uh, rhythm and tempo. So before we begin um, with the students today, I would like to tell you what Bharatanatyam is. Bharatanatyam um, comes from the word, the Sanskrit word. It means bha is coming from the word bhava, meaning emotion. Ra is raga, meaning uh, ragam or melody. Ta is tala, meaning rhythm. And natyam is dance. Um, it is one of the major classical dance forms of India and the theoretical foundations of Bharatanatyam are found in the Natya Shastra, which was written by Bharatamuni um, between 200 BCE and 200 CE. Um, Bharatanatyam did initiate in the Hindu temples of Tamil Nadu and eventually flourished in South India. Um, women who were dancing this form in the temples were known as Devadasis. Um, and at that time, this particular form was called Sadir Natyam, as they were also known as Sadirs. However, due to colonization of the British um, and due to many other things that are a controversy and it's a huge other argument, um, Bharatanatyam did come out of the temples and um, is now um, accessible to everybody, but somehow um, the Devadasis are not really credited for it. Anyhow, um, what we are doing today um, are really the basics of Bharatanatyam, the fundamentals of Bharatanatyam. Um, this group began last year online because there was a pandemic um, and I began to teach dance online. And um, I think it was, uh, it was a very strange period for all of us. I also never thought that um, we were going to learn online, teach online. Um, I was learning online as well as teaching online. Uh, but the great, great about, thing about this particular group was that uh, we're a very small group, just three of us, uh, three students, uh, and then there's me. Um, but it, it continued the whole year, um, twice a week uh, of classes. 
um the girls have been very very dedicated um and so we wanted to celebrate this one year journey of learning a form um as well as um share our journey with you and uh, um show you what we have learned what we have been doing this one year i would like to now introduce our students first of all we have asra khalid who is a fashion designer from pakistan institute of fashion design and currently she works in lahore she is really fond of arts and culture and she has also all her work has been her main inspiration um art has been her main inspiration maham khalid uh, sorry <laughs> uh, maham javed is a journalist and a writer she has reported and edited for newspapers and news magazines in lahore and karachi she has also worked as a human rights researcher at human rights watch maham also writes fiction and last year she won a national award for a short story currently maham is freelancing as an editor and writing short stories and next we have zehra nawab zehra nawab is an award winning filmmaker illustrator journalist and actor she has designed the book cover for sita under the crescent moon published by simon and schuster after having worked in many theater productions in canada and in pakistan she has now made her feature film acting debut in nabil qureshi's khel khel mein in cinemas currently her short film as a director farzana has also recently premiered in canada um so you can see all these three students are amazing they are so um talented um so i was honestly really honored um to have the opportunity to teach them um and uh, go through this journey of learning a movement language with them now uh, before i i let the girls explain you what they have learned um before we begin um indian classical dance has three elements main elements nritya nritya and natya nritya is technique um technical dancing pure dance um nritya on the other hand is technique as well as um uh, telling a story and natya is dance drama of course initially to learn any movement language learning the technique is very important and so what we have been doing this first year is entirely nritya um including little things between that husband, the hand gestures movements before you learn how to create a phrase or to dance a whole sequence there are very small things taught um and those really make up your vocabulary um in the movement language that you are learning and so now i will let the girls take over um and explain to you uh what they have been learning and what these little movements are all about um hello everyone um so one of the first things that we learned when we began learning bharatnatyam was the hand movements these are called hasta mudras and there's two types of them single hand gestures and double hand gestures um what's really nice or really unique about the hasta mudras is that um is that there there is a hand gesture for anything in the universe so the vocabulary is it's unlimited um it's it's unending um we're just going to show you the basic ones um and yeah we we'll start with the single hand gestures assam yuta hasta mudras the single hand gestures pataka tri patako अर्ध पटाका कतड़ी मुका कतड़ी मुका मायो राख्यो अर्ध चंद्र अराला शकतुंद मुस्तेच 
Suchi Chandrakala Padma Kosha Sarprashi Rastatha Mrigashesha Simhamokaha Kangaluscha Alapad Makaha Shaturo Brahmaras Chaiva Hamsasyo Hamsapak Sakaha Samdam Mukulas Chaiva Tamra Chura Trishula Lakaha Okay, now we'll do the double hand gestures. Anjalischa Kaputascha Kalkata Swastikastatha Dola Hasta Pushpaputaha Utsanga Utsanga Shivaling Dakaha Kataka Vardhanas Chaiva Kartari Swastikas Tatha Shakatam Shankha Chakrecha Samputa Pasha Kilakau Matsya Kurmu Varahascha Karudo Nagabandakaha Khatva Perundakyakyascha Avahittastataivacha Now we're going to show you Bhedas. Bhedas in Indian classical dance are different movements of different body parts. Uh, and today we're going to show you Drishti, Griva, Mandala and Pada Bhedas. Drishti Bhedas, eye movements. Sama Alukitam Sachi Ralukita Nimilite Ulukita Anuvrite Avalukita Now we're going to show you Griva Veda's neck movements. Sundari
Tirastina. Parivartita. Prakampita. Uh, we are now going to show you some of the mandala as well as the padabhedas. These are basically certain standing positions, certain, certain leg positions, as well as feet positions or movements um, that we often use in Bharatanatyam, uh, especially in the first, um, let's, let's say the first um, uh, few years of learning the dance form. Um, the first position is Samapada. Aramandi, Prinkana, Prerita, Swastika, Takadi, Ni, Takadi, Nu, Takadi. Me, We now come to Adabus. Adabu means basic step. Um, and they form the ABCs of pure dancing, or Nritta, as uh, I explained earlier. And just like a combination of certain alphabets that give words and eventually create phrases, Adabus are combined to form a dance sequence in Bharatanatyam. There are various types of Adabus. Um, and we will present some of them today, not all of them, um, as of course, Adubus take a long time um, before we can really master them or even, even just really absorb them in our body. The first set of Adubus that are usually taught to a Bharatanatyam dancer or student are the Tatta Adubus. Tatta Adubus are, um, Tatta means to tap and they are a way of um, of, of learning how to tap your feet in Bharatanatyam or striking your foot on the floor. There are eight variations of Tatta Dabus. Um, Asra and Maham will be presenting to you um, for each. Um, and even though Tatta Dabus are primarily uh, all about the feet, um, in order to make a sequence out of it, uh, both Asra and Maham have choreographed certain hand variations uh, to the four other rules that they will, the four other rules that they will show you, um, using space, directions, the hand gestures that they have learned, and uh, in this you will also see that there are three speeds being done. The three speeds are called vilambam, madhyamam, and duritam. In usually um, in Pakistan, if you um, if you have studied uh, North Indian music. We call it the lay, which is vilambit lay, madhya lay, and drut lay. So that's the first speed, second speed, and third speed. So we are always um, learning um, to master these three speeds. So first, we will have Asra, who will show her version of the first, third, fifth, and seventh tatta dabu. And then we will have Maham showing us her version of first, third, Seventh and eighth at the room. Mm -hmm. 
ਕਈ ਤਾਂ ਕਿਟ ਤੱਕ ਤਈ 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 ਦੇ ਦੇ ਤਈ 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 ਦੇ ਦੇ ਤਈ 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 ਦੇ ਦੇ ਤਈ 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 ਦੇ ਦੇ ਕਿਟ ਤੱਕ ਤਈਆ ਤਈ 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 ਕਿਟ ਤੱਕ ਤਈ ਤਈ ਤਾਂ ਤਈ ਤਈ ਤਾਂ ਤਈ ਤਈ ਤਾਂ ਤਈ ਤਈ ਕਿਟ ਤੱਕ ਤਈ 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 ਤਾਂ ਤਈ 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 ਤਾਂ ਤਈ 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 ਤਾਂ ਤਈ 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 ਕਿਟ ਤੱਕ ਤਈ 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 ਦਿੱਤ ਤਈ 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 ਦਿੱਤ ਤਈ 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 ਦਿੱਤ ਤਈ 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 ਕਿਟ ਤੱਕ ਤਈ 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 uh we will now present to you the nat adavus um this is another set of uh, adavus that are taught usually after the tat adavus and are the most basic ones the word nata means to stretch and this adavu involves the footwork the legs to stretch and as well as the arms and it's really the first um, adavu that a dancer learns where you learn to form beautiful patterns this uh, adavu also involves flexed feet uh, meaning that the heel is kept on the ground the toes are kept like that and this nata nata adavus also have eight variations we will be showing you the first three combined together with maham doing the first nata adavu and the third one asra doing the second nata adavu and the third one after that we will be showing you the 5th 6th 7th and 8th again combined together to form a sequence um and we begin the first second and third nata adavu good tak ti ko tak ta dhingan tom tai yum tak ta tai yum ta tai yum ta ta tai yum ta tai yum ta ta tai yum ta tai yum ta ta tai yum ta 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 ka tai yum ta ta tai yum ta 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 tai yum ta ta tai yum 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 ta tai yum
செய்யும் 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 Thank you. And now we will show you the last uh, four variations of the Nata Dabu, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. But each one of them will be done with a separate side. For example, the 5th one will be shown from the right side. The 6th variation will be shown from the left. And in the same way, 7th will be shown from the right, 8th from the left. And we go. together we show you and now okay so now we will uh, show you a few other adavus um before uh, we present to you a little sequence um choreographed by asra and maham together um with different adavus together but before we move to that i would like you to have a little taste of what these different adhus are about um, and why do we usually use them. So um, I would like first to uh, Maham for us to to come um, on spotlight please. Okay so Maham will be showing us a, a variation of the Visharu adhu or the Paraval adhu. This adhu is used to take space. There are different variations to this. The one that we will do um, is with the Kataka Mukaha as well as the Alapadma. These are the hand gestures which were um, being told earlier. So let's see a small uh, variation of the Visharu Adubu which is used to take space. We go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so this 
uh, the who is used to um, taking space. Um, and of course, this can be done in different directions. Um, and it also depends on how a dancer wants to use their space. The other one that we uh, that Maha will be showing us is the uh, is the Tati Meta Adavu. Um, the Tati Meta Adavu basically is all with footwork, and that's the one. Yes, that's that's perfect, Maham. That's the one um, which introduces different jatis. Uh, now, this whole concept is not very easy to explain like this, but I will try to give you a little bit. Uh, there are five jatis, which are basically different variations um, used in ekatalam. Ekatalam goes with a clap and using fingers. With the five jatis, we have different counts using three, uh, the tishra jati, uh, khanda jati, chatushra jati, sankirna jati, and the mishra jati. So basically, Maham will be showing us the khanda jati, which goes like ek, do, teen, char, punch. One, two, three, four, five. And so the bowls for this are ta, ka, ta, ki, ta. And this she will show it to us with her feet from the right side. Da lag kuto, ta dinge na to, ta, ka, ta, ki, ta. Ta, ka, ta, ki, ta. Ta, ka, ta. One variation of the Tati Mata Adabu. After that, um, Maham will also show us one of the uh, one variation of the Utplavana Adabu or the Paisal Adabu, in which we learn how to jump um, as we take space. And the bowls for this are Dutta Yuta Tate. This also we just show it to you from the right side. We go dhalang kuta kati kuta kata ingirna tom dish te yum ta ka te 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 Thank you. After that, uh, Maham will show us one more variation, um, which is from the Tirmana Madhavu. Um, this is called uh, the Manamadavus basically are usually used to conclude a sequence um, or a dance phrase or a dance piece. The variation that Maham will show us is Tadhingyanatum, Taka Tadhingyanatum, Taka Dhiku Tadhingyanatum. That means one, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Dhalang, Kutaka Dhiku Taka Tadhingyanatum, Ta Dhingyanat. Perfect, thank you. Um, I would like now Asra to be on spotlight so we can see some other variations of some other rules with her. So, first of all, coming to the um, um, the Tati Meta Davus, Asra will show us the Sankirna Jati, which is nine counts. So, just to remind you, Ek, Do, Teen, Char, Paan, Chai, Saat, Aat, No, One, Two, Three, Four, Five, Six, Seven, Eight, Nine. The bowls will be Ta, Ka, Di, Ni, Ta, Ka, Ta, Ki, Ta. Okay, and that's how it goes. So we see the Sankirna Jati from the right side and the Lankutom, the Dinginatom, the Ka, the Me, the Ka, the Ka, the Ka, the Ka, the Me, the Ka, the Ka, the Ka, the Ka, Me, the Ka, the Ka, the Ka, the Ka, the Ka, me, ka, ka, ta, ki, ka. Thank you. And now, um, Asra will show us two variations in the from the Tirmana Madhavus, which are the concluding Adavus. One of them is called the Makuta Adavu. Makuta means the crown. Um, the goals are ta, hata, jhamtari, ta, jhamtari, jagatari, tai. And we go. 
தலம் புத்த கதி புத்த கதிங்கும் Thank you. So this is one. Then the other one is Tai Tai Didi Tai 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 Didi Tai. Another concluding adobo. Dalang buta kadi buta kada din yun na tom Tai Tai Didi Tai Didi Tai Didi Tai. All right, and then um, yes. That's it. That's what. Ah, we are also showing you the Tati Kutu Adavus. Yes. The Tati Kutu Adavus are basically um, stamping, they're about stamping your feet and also bringing the heel up and striking the heel on the floor. So the goals for this are Tat Te Taha, Dhit Te Taha. In this sequence, um, Asra manages to show you almost all the variations of Tat Te Taha, Dhit Te Taha. And we go. Dhalang putak di putak ta dinge na tom ta 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 Di Ta 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 Di Ta Ta Thank you. So these were just a few variations of other moves that we wanted to show you. Now we will present to you a little, little sequence that um, is just based on eight counts. And uh, Asra and Maham together, using the different adavus that they have learned, um, they have choreographed this together, um, using their space, using the directions, and of course, we don't, um, like some of us have never met each other also, so we have no idea how tall, short someone is, um, how we would have used the space if we were physically together, um, so it's very interesting um, also for, for me to watch them uh, choreograph this on their own keeping in mind that our audience is in the computer and all the space that they have is their space or their rooms in their homes. So we can now have Maha and Astra on spotlight and we will show you this little variation of other rooms. Mom, could we have your video? Perfect. Thank you. 
try to also learn a piece um, in this one year. Uh, that piece is called Alaripu. In a typical, a traditional Bharatanatyam um, recital, um, Alaripu is one of the first, first pieces that is taught and also one of the first pieces performed in a, in a Bharatanatyam recital. Alaripu means flowering bud and as you will see this performance, which will be done by Maham Asra and Zehra, you will see that uh, it, it starts in a very balanced way and then eventually it really opens up. So it really opens up, you know, as a, as a flower. Um, for me personally, Alaripu uh, is one of the most difficult pieces um, and it's, um, it, it requires a lot of focus, it requires a lot of um, balance, um, but at the same time, it's very beautiful. It's a pure Nitta piece. Before we begin uh, learning an alaripu, we do learn how to speak um, the alaripu, if, if that's the correct way to put it. Um, in order to understand the rhythm, in order to understand uh, the bowls or um, the, the words of the, of the dance piece, um, it's very important that the girls know what the rhythm is, um, that the students know what the rhythm is, and then they are able to dance to it. Um, this is an Eka Talam, Chatushra Jati, and I will briefly re recite it for you before they show it to us. Eka Talam, as we said, as we introduced the uh, Jatis before, we showed you the fifth one and the ninth one. Uh, this one is in four counts. So, one, two, three, four, or eight, do, teen, cha. And I will briefly recite uh, for you the Alaripu that they will be performing. ตัยยัตัยยุมตัตตัตตัมกิตตะตะกะตัยยัตัยยุมตัตตัตตัมกิตตะตะกะตัมเดตตัมกิตตะตะกะตัมเดตตัมกิตตะตะกะตัมเด
and now uh, the girls will perform for you the alari ko tay ya tay yum ta 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 om ke ta ta ka ta tay ya tay yum ta 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 om ke ta ta ka ta om de ta om ke ta ta ka tay ta tay ke ta ta ka ta om de ta om ke ta ta ka tay ra
Maham Aslan Zaira. Uh, this was the end uh, of our little demonstration for Bharatanatyam. Um, but before we end, I would like all of us um, thank you to everybody who's been commenting. It really means a lot. I mean, chatting, uh, putting comments on the chat. Um, this is very, very different for us. Before I end uh, or say anything about this, I would once again um, like to pay respect to my teachers. Um, it is very, very important for us um, to have teachers for such movement, uh, to learn such movement languages. Um, again, once again, um, Shima Kemani ji, my first teacher, Vitya Razuaka and Saiki Prapasanaka, even if I've learned very briefly for them, um, the way they have contributed um, to my learning has really uh, been huge um, in many ways. And um, I would not think of myself um, um, as, as, a, as a master at all. Um, we are all learning, uh, but I think what's beautiful about um, these art forms is that we're able to give it to other people um, and only if we're very deeply, sincerely passionate about it. Um, so yes, I first wanted to thank them. And then I really, really want to thank my students. I think, uh, um, you know, they've, they've been, I am getting a bit <laughs> emotional, but it's okay, I always do. Um, no, or, or only because they've been part of um, this whole journey of one being in this pandemic, you know, um, we've been doing everything online and um, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite tricky to, to teach, but it's also very tricky to be a student uh, at this point, you know, um, and honestly, they've been so amazing this whole time that I was pregnant. Uh, sometimes if I wasn't doing classes, uh, the girls were getting together, doing it themselves, uh, practicing. Um, and I think only Zera and I know each other. Um, the rest, um, um, I, I haven't met Maham or Astra in my life. Um, they haven't met each other. Um, and we still haven't seen each other ever. <laughs> um, but it's been quite uh, a beautiful journey. And now I would like the girls, if they are happy to say something uh, about their journey, um, what was interesting for them about learning this form, or this this whole um, thing about doing it online? Uh, at no point am I saying that we should only do online classes now. Uh, but honestly, it was a um, very very special experience um, with us joining from four different countries: Canada, Pakistan, Italy, USA, um, and then just really like connecting to something um, together. I think it was very special for me. Um, I would love for them to say something if they'd like to, and then we can co open it for Q&A if uh, anybody has any questions um, for the students, for me, um, or for all of us. So whoever wants to go, just unmute yourselves, the girls, and you can talk. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, so yeah, I just want to say um, a few things. Um, one of them is, um, you know, it's just been, you know, it was, um, it's, this comes from a huge place of privilege, right, where we could do something, um, uh, something interesting and something creative and something productive during the pandemic. Um, but, you know, it was, it wasn't just about being creative or productive. It was like, we needed this right like i needed this during the pandemic i needed um i didn't i knew i needed something but i didn't know was that i needed this wonderful um you know group of girlfriends as well um and yeah i think the the second thing that i would just want to say is just a huge thank you to sohai for teaching us for bearing with us um typically bharatnatyam is is uh, something that young girls learn um we are not young girls <laughs> Um, and that's okay, you know, and so kudos to Suhai for taking us on, for just always being there, you know, while she also produced life. Um, she has a three month old baby, um, you know, who and it's just it's so wonderful. Um, and yeah, and the third thing I just I, I mean, I guess I yeah, I don't want to say anything else. That's just, uh, I mean, I would I'd would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, you know, about Bharatnatyam and like the whole idea of um, 
And so I brought it up in the start about like where Bharatanatyam originated from and, you know, what does it mean that today um, a bunch of, um, well, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but a Pakistani Muslim girl living in DC is now learning and practicing this art form, you know, just the, the layers of that, like we can't, we can't talk about that if you want. Um, but yeah, Astra or Zera, whoever wants to, but yeah. Um, I would only like to say thank you, everyone, or uh, for coming. And um, for me, it was so. It's like whenever I used to go to Alhambra and watch those performances, and I didn't even believe that one day I would be doing that. So it's like so great to learn, and <laughs> that's it. I want to thank you all of you. So and so high for teaching this online, and um, I can't express enough right now. And um, all this thing, like it's a performance or to make this happen. <laughs> and all of you, and we, although we have never met, and I think we are like the best friends ever right now. So we continue to share everything with each other and not just dance. So I think we connect so much. And for others, it won't be like, how can, is this possible? Like we've never seen, but it's true. <laughs> like with, we connect so much together. आदाब आप सबका बहुत शुक्रिया कि आप सबने आज आके हमें देखा to celebrate our one year anniversary as students of Sahai Abro has been a real privilege to share with such an encouraging and supportive audience um, thank you for the virtual applause and words of encouragement um, so hi we've always seen you perform and admired you as audience members so now to be able to learn from you be students of yours and be your friends and to be able to witness you on this journey has been a real privilege and thank you for bringing Maha Masra and I together because uh, as they both said it really has been a very beautiful friendship and one that I think we all needed especially during this past year it was not only a meeting twice a week for dance class but it became a social activity almost. We look forward to conversations with one another and we have a very active WhatsApp group. So thank you so high for being a teacher, mentor, friend, and someone who brought like-minded creative people together. And I look forward to being on a stage with all of you and performing and celebrating this beautiful art form. And my favorite aspect of it was also alongside learning the history um, of uh, the dance form and it's it's always been something that uh, has interested us but to be able to learn that from so high and then also subsequently uh, been curious enough to read up and it's been a fascinating unfolding of this dance form so thank you everyone and we look forward to your questions thank you um i'm not quite sure how we can look at questions but adana maham could help us with that um i mean so far we have um uh, two questions um i think one of them one of them is i'll just read out both of them one of them is how is it possible to learn all of this online um okay. and then the other one i think that's more of a rhetorical question where they're just like how did you memorize all the hasta mudras i mean the short answer to that is just rut up <laughs> but yeah, the online question, I think Sohai uh, would give a better answer to how she taught us online. Yeah, um, how it's possible to learn everything online. Honestly, um, it's I think it's very difficult. We're not saying that the girls have learned everything online, you know, uh, like they've learned everything. Like to learn everything is, I haven't learned everything myself. You know, we we all keep learning. But the point here is for sure that um, apart from the video uh, calls that we do on Zoom, um, I do send them a lot. Like I do, I will have to send them sometimes a, a separate video of myself doing it. Um, and like, or, or we repeat it a lot of times. We keep explaining it on the video call or, I, or I'll explain it in audio messages. I'll send them like practice audios. Um, that they can practice to, then they will record their videos and send them to me before they even come to the session. Um, and then I will like comment on that or I'll say, oh, maybe this doesn't work or this this works. You know, so yeah, it's, it's a lot more than just coming to the class. Um, and it's uh, because they have practiced and they have like, 
been interested in it apart from the class um, that it has made it a little possible otherwise it is quite hard um, for just the teacher to do to just be available it cannot be a one-sided relationship um, they have to put effort and i have to put effort as well um, so that's how we do it online i send lots of audios um, i send lots of practice audios videos and we do these uh, video calls on zoom what was the next question maham mute <laughs> yeah sorry the next question was just about hasta mudras as in how we memorize them right I mean, oh yeah um yeah actually the, they, they had remembered it even like without reading it i actually tested them once we had a whole test thing you know they had really practiced the amazing thing about these three is they take everything very seriously <laughs> they don't like even if you know they're they're not i don't know 10 years old, uh, at least they're very serious. They, if I say I'm going to test you on something, they, they take it seriously and they actually study. <laughs> um, but of course, um, it takes it takes a long time. It took me years to remember this. Honestly, I um, one year is not enough to um, remember them by heart. Um, it took me at least five years, I think, before I could finally know them without having to read. Any other, how long have you been teaching the girls? Uh, we started September 2020, September 29th or 28th, 2020. And uh, yes, so it's been one year and two months. Yes. Um, and there's another question. Do you feel any physical effects of dancing, like effects on your health? Ah, uh, of course. Uh, absolutely. Uh, maybe maybe the girls should answer. I, I talk about these things a lot in general. Maybe you guys, because I am a dancer. For some of them, maybe it was the first time doing this. So maybe you guys can answer this. Um, I'll start. Go ahead. Uh, so before learning, so there are a lot of exercises we have to do. So of course, when there's a lot of exercises, then uh, there are physical changes in your body like more like athletic type but maybe not right now it's not um too much but uh but my mother for example keeps on telling me that you've changed a lot but and uh, i feel more energetic and whenever there's a class or they're going forward i'm always looking forward to classes uh, just so before that we have warm-ups and uh, and yeah smile all the time <laughs> and you're so happy <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, the biggest uh, physical uh, change, I mean, I, I guess it's not a physical change, but it's just my mental health, right? It's, um, it's, it, it, it's like very positively impacted my mental health, which then, which then impacts your physical health as well. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, you, you can hurt yourself, you can have injuries, but then there's ways to prevent that, which is, you know, always warm up, always cool down, um, stretch, stretch, stretch. Stretching is like, um, I sometimes tell so high that, so in the beginning of every class, we usually stretch first for about 15, 10, 15 minutes, sometimes 20. And just the physical and mental benefit of that stretching, like in the first 20 minutes, of class I'm just like I'm a different person I'm like so at peace physically mentally and you know I tell the high I'm like you know this is like this is therapy for me um so yeah so we have a few more questions so I can stop um blabbing um so Misha wants to know the difference between Bharat Natyam and Kathak and then um and then uh, um Kesar Khan wants to know um how Bharat Natyam affects our life in a positive way okay um uh, the difference between Bharatanatyam and Kathak um, first is that they are different movement languages. I like to call them languages because it, it, it makes it easier for me to understand that um, it's almost like I'm speaking um, Urdu and then I'm speaking Sindhi or Italian. You know, it's a different language. So Bharatanatyam um, is, um, is, is using different postures, different language, different instruments musical instruments, um, the, the culture that it comes from is different, is, it has a different history. Kathak, on the other hand, um, obviously visually looks different from Bharatanatyam, again, uses a different language, different instruments. 
um, and has a different history from Bharatanatyam, um, but perhaps a similar one. But yes, uh, that's the basic um, difference between the two forms. Um, there are other Indian classical dance forms also, like Uresi, uh, Kuchipuri, Mohiniyattam, um, Manipuri. Um, you know, all these forms uh, are, are languages, they're movement languages. They're perhaps starting from a similar place, um, but because they're coming from different parts of India, um, or, or they began in with, with a different geographical uh, um, point. They are visually different. The costumes are also different. So yes, um, that's the thing. They're just different languages, basically. Um, classical dance, um, it doesn't have to be just one kind. In Pakistan, usually we find, we think classical dance is, we have an image of it. Um, and um, and that's, that's not usually how it is. Um, what was the next question, Maham? Um, Just how does Bharatanatyam affect our life in a positive way? Okay, um, Bharatanatyam, um, I, I think it's it's a little, um, it, it, it has to come from perhaps the, the teacher and the environment that you learn in. Um, otherwise, you can learn Bharatanatyam anywhere. Um, and I'm not saying I'm the best teacher at all. I'm not even like super, you know. I, I, I just mean to say that it is a very technical movement language to learn um, and it can make um, you lose confidence in some things, you know, um, like how you look, um, your, your flexibility, your strength, um, all of these things. So it really depends on the environment that you learn in. Um, otherwise, uh, if, if that's all good, Bharatanatyam, I think one increases your stamina a lot, um, builds a lot of muscle in different places, gives you a great sense of rhythm, um, you know, um, gives you um, a great sense of um, using your body in, in, a, in a different way, um, not the usual way that you would dance, because again, it's a, it's a particular language that you learn. So that could be a positive effect, you know, of I'll it. I'll add to this. Yes, please. Um, I think Bharatanatyam also really teaches you this awareness of your body because mm -hmm. there's you're being taught to um, reflect on, notice and move each and every part, be it just a little part of your finger to your neck, to the eyes. So there's a lot of focus that goes into it. And I really noticed it in some of my performance-based work. I am a theater actor and I recently uh, did um, some film work. Um, I kale kale maids in, in cinemas these days. And I know that the way that I carried myself on stage or on the film camera um, really I could see the difference when I saw the recordings or um, there is just an awareness of what your body can do and the power that even the slightest of movements has in how you express yourself and how it comes across to an audience so I think that's something I really took away from this uh, beautiful dance form that's not just while you're dancing it's it's also while you're doing other kinds of performances but I think even when you're just generally conducting yourself I think my general demeanor posture um, just an awareness for my body uh, all of that has really come into play I, I agree with that yeah uh, because, because I felt that um, when I when I also learned um, any other questions or um, maybe we can um, Sai Kripa she's saying that is it possible that I um, uh, Sai, Sai Kripa uh, Akka is my teacher um, she's be teaching me um, I, I briefly learned with her Nathu Wangam where I don't see sorry <laughs> um, I, I am trying I'm trying to unmute her just give me one second I'm ah, okay Yes. I asked her to unmute. Okay. Oh, you did it already? Mm -hmm. Namaste, everyone. Namaste, Sayaka. Sorry, I'm not unmuting my video. And okay, yes, uh, hi, very hearty congratulations to you. I can Thank see you. the kind of passion you have more than anything. Uh, and this is very rare thing to find because it's one thing to want to be a teacher, another thing to be a very passionate uh, person with the art form. And I'm sure uh, Maham, Asra and Zahra are very fortunate 
to have your association and uh, as a dance teacher i can very evidently see the kind of hard work that has gone behind this for this to happen just in a matter of year so my hearty congratulations to each one of you i really desperately wanted to wish you people that's why i voluntarily said i want to uh, i'm very happy to associate with suhai and uh, wishing you the very best suhai god bless you god thank bless you all thank you so much sayaka that that means so much um um and Not when sure. the, the moment i had started uh, learning natumangam i was always telling uh, the girls about it about our classes things that i was learning with you um thank you so much it means the world um for everything that you said thank you um before we say goodbye i'm just going to do a plug in for sohai cuz she never does her own plug ins um so sohai teaches bharatnatyam and kathak ah. and she also does dance movement uh, all three are very different very interesting i've obviously tried them all because i'm obsessed um mm -hmm. and they you can do them all online they're very affordable you can do once a week or twice a week it's up to you you can also perhaps do thrice a week if you're really dedicated so yeah if you're interested in kathak or bharatnatyam or you know she she does this uh, different by different class with with flow and dance movement so you know you have all those options and <laughs> thank you mom i didn't even know what plug in meant <laughs> so Oh, so there was a specific question about yeah beginner level classes as well if you want to elaborate on that beginner level class um okay so um any uh, it, it it depends on what you do if you're doing something like bharatanatyam um you can't uh, you also if you ask the girls so many times they felt uh, oh this is something we can't do this is too hard so initially you always feel like uh, oh, this is too hard it's difficult um but eventually you get there um so yeah um i i if, if um, we we can talk about that later um what else can i say about beginner classes i also perhaps see um the pace of the entire group or if it's an individual class um and i think the first thing that's important for me is to get the body going so maybe we exercise first we learn certain strength and flexibility exercises before we move on to um certain things um so yes we can we can talk about that uh, later um i think we're good thank you and your boss had asked when is the next performance <laughs> when is the next performance <laughs> let's uh, do a plug in for maham now <laughs> <laughs> no we will we'll, we'll take some time so we can uh, work a little harder hopefully we can all physically meet each other um and perhaps even do something on a stage one day um yes so again um i just like to thank everybody who showed up today it really means a lot um um and thank you to all the students thank you to my teachers their teachers everybody's teachers um and uh, our our loved ones uh, because we're all doing this online everybody's family um uh, partners friends everybody has helped us a lot adil uh, my friend uh, was always helping me backstage um even when, when i was in karachi even now he's sitting in karachi and doing all the backstage work um so yes um everybody um a huge thank you to all and um if you have any more questions for anybody please reach out to us um on 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 instagram um uh, and uh, or or you can email us um danceheartmind@gmail.com um and if you know your friends maham as friend there you can just ask them um so yes thank you all right bye bye okay